So let us look at a typical argument as you would uh, analyze or let's say assess everyday situation again. Let's say you're watching TV today. When you're watching TV, let's say you're watching some kind of an animal uh, channel or whatever, discovery channel, and you got to know something about Australia. And from there, you got to know about this particular type of animals that live there. Now, let's say that you were watching a program on a specific species of bats which lives in Australia. From there, you gathered the information that all bats are mammals. This information you watch the program and you go, I gather from that. From your childhood, you, there is another nugget of information that is there in your mind that you know already. And that information is that all mammals are warm blood. This is an information that you already have from right from your school. Based on these two premises, what is the conclusion you can reach? 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 now. Therefore, what would you say about all bats? All bats are mammals. We know that already. So what's the conclusion? Yes. Therefore, all bats are warm-blooded is the conclusion you have reached. Now let's say I present this argument before you and I ask you to critically evaluate. That means what is the meaning of critical evaluation? You have to study the conclusion and ask yourself, do I believe this conclusion based on the facts given? So I'm asking you, do you believe this conclusion that all bats are warm-blooded based on these facts? Yes, you will provide it. Premise number one is 100% true. And premise number two is 100% true. Then there cannot be any doubt about the conclusion that all bats are warm-blooded. This is 100% acceptable. So you would say this is a logical conclusion. I have no problems with this conclusion. But let's say when you are watching this program on TV, you did not get to know about all bats. You got to know about this particular type of species of bats which is living in Australia. So the best you could understand from here is that some bats are mammals. Okay, now some bats are mammals, but you do know all mammals are warm-blooded. Now if I were to give you a conclusion like this, therefore all bats are warm-blooded, would you accept this conclusion to be logical? Would you discard this conclusion totally? What would you do? Yes. There are going to be instances where facts presented to you don't completely support the conclusion. Therefore, in this instance, you don't discard the conclusion. You modify the conclusion to suit the facts. You got the point? Here, therefore, instead of saying all bats are warm-blooded, you would say I can't accept it because I don't know about all bats, but I do know that some of these bats living in Australia are mammals. Therefore, these bats that are there in, mam in Australia are definitely warm-blooded would be your modification. Now, is this argument logical? Yes, it is. By modifying the conclusion, you have made it logical. You know, I go to a birthday party and I make an observation. I see the beautiful decoration and the balloons and stuff like that. And I turn to my friend and I say, the room looks so beautiful because all the balloons in the room are pink in color. Now, my friend might be a little more observant and she might say, you know, there are some blue balloons near the, you know, the days where the birthday boy is, you know, cutting the cake. So what do I do? I say, the room looks so beautifully decorated because most of the balloons in the room are pink in color. So logic is not about discarding. It's about modifying, altering and still making it logical. But when will this argument become utterly illogical would be if I were to say something like this. Having told you about bats that all bats are mammals and all mammals are warm blooded, I end up saying therefore all cats are here, what would you do? There is no way of redeeming this argument. There's no way you can make this argument work for you. The only thing you can do is discard this argument saying there's utterly no logic. It's like my saying, I'm a good singer because I can teach you the verbal reasoning section. 
there is no connection between the facts. So in any argument, the syllogism means the sequence of the ideas, the facts that are presented must logically lead to the conclusion. They must be appropriate, relevant and suitable to the conclusion reached. So when you are critically evaluating the content of an argument, you must be able to see whether the facts presented are enough to be able to completely and totally support the conclusion. Now such kind of premises which says all bats are mammals or a bat is a mammal, these are called as generalizations. Generalizations are statements that are meant to be applicable to all. Many times particularizations can also be made. One specific instance can be taken leading to a conclusion. For example, if I make a generalization saying that software engineers working for Wipro for more than five years draw a minimum salary of 10 lakhs per annum. Gopal is working for Wipro for the last five years as a software engineer. Therefore, his salary must be very high, minimum 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs per annum. Here, the first statement is a generalization. Software engineers working for Wipro for more than five years draw a very high salary above 10 lakhs. That is a generalization. The specification is one person, Gopal, who is working as a software engineer. How long is he working? For more than five years. Therefore, the conclusion becomes logical. He must be drawing a high salary. When can this argument go wrong? If the generalization is false. It's not necessary that software engineers are working for Wipro are getting a very high salary of about 10 lakhs, if that goes wrong. When can this argument go wrong? If Gopal is not working for Wipro, or if Gopal is working for Wipro but not as a software engineer, then there is no logic in saying he's drawing a very high salary. So the facts presented must be accurately assessed whether they fit into the argument. Sometimes arguments can have appropriate generalizations and, and particularizations, but the conclusion still may not be true. Even though there's a syllogism, they may still not be true. When? When can this happen? For example, if I were to give you an argument like this, which is, The first one is a generalization which says all women are brilliant. The second is a particularization which says specifically that I am a woman. Based on these two, the generalization and particularization, I come to a conclusion, therefore I am brilliant. So logism is perfect. The logical construction is perfect. But still, do you agree? The men here, do you agree with the argument? This is for you ladies. Huh? Do you agree with the argument? No. Why? Just because you are not a woman? Logic. You tell me why. Why do you disagree with this argument? If you are logical, you would also disagree, disagree, right? Tell me why. Where is the problem? Okay, I am a woman is a particularization. You see me standing in front of you, so there's no doubt about that. So where is the problem then? In the generalization which says all women are brilliant. Now this is a generalization that cannot be accepted because facts will show you that it is contradictory. Some women are brilliant, some are clever, some are not. Now let me tell you the story behind this generalization. I went to Stanford, Berkeley, and I conducted a GRE test for all the women in this particular college. Every student of Berkeley, every lady who took the GRE test, she got a score of 330 plus on the GRE. Based on that, I'm saying, therefore, all women are brilliant. Now tell me why I am still wrong. Based on the study that I conducted where all the women students there took the GRE test and got a score of 330 plus out of possible 340. So I am concluding therefore all women are brilliant. Where am I still wrong? Yes, absolutely. My survey was done in one specific college and you should understand if these girls are studying there in that college they must be brilliant. So to take a test there of these students and then to generalize on their, their performance for all the students who are going to be taking the GRE and therefore thinking that every girl who's going to take the GRE is going to get 330 plus is 
illogical. Therefore, this generalization is done on an incomplete study. So this itself is not accurate. So though this logism is working, this conclusion is doubtful. It is dubious. It cannot be. So using your critical reasoning, your logical assessment of this argument, you would say, I do not accept this particular conclusion because this generalization is too narrow and it cannot be acceptable for all women. So the generalization is not working, therefore the conclusion becomes illogical. Let's take another simple argument. Premise 1 says bribery is a corrupt practice. Giving donations is a bribe. Conclusion. Therefore, giving come on, give me the answer. Donations is a corrupt practice. Okay, let's assess. Let us critically assess this conclusion. Now the generalization is a common statement. All forms of bribery, whether you give bribe or you take bribe is corrupt. There is no doubt about premise number one. Now we come to a specific type of bribe and that is giving donations. And you are saying that giving donations is a bribe. Let's assess the statement. What is giving donations? When do we give donations? Let's talk about instances of giving donations. This parent takes a son who is not qualified in any of the entrance exams to this college, engineering college, and the college says, I'm sorry, we cannot give him admission just like that, but if you give us a building donation of 10 lakhs, we might consider him for admission. So the father writes a check for 10 lakhs, and the son gets an admit into this particular college. What would you call this giving building donation to the college? You'd call it a bribe. This person is getting a seat which he doesn't deserve. Another student who is not capable of paying the 10 lakhs may not get the seat, though he may deserve to be in the college. So would you call this giving donations to be a bribe? Yes. But let's say this terrible calamity happened in the coastal region, a cyclone. And this person writes a check for 5,000 rupees and sends it to this organization which is helping those people who are suffering from the, from the calamity. He sends a donation for 5,000 rupees in what? In charity to help support these people. Would you call this sending of this 5,000 rupees as a donation as a bribe? No. No, you wouldn't. Therefore, to say that giving donations is a corrupt practice just like that becomes illogical. But in this argument, you can do a modification. You can make it more specific. What can you do? You can, you can specify when you give donations as a bribe, it is corrupt. But when you give donations as charity, it cannot be classified as corrupt practice. So this argument's conclusion can be accepted only partially. In this argument, the argument's conclusion, therefore all bats are warm-blooded, can be accepted totally. In this argument, this, arg this particular argument's conclusion can be discarded as illogical because the generalization doesn't work for all. In this particular argument, because the specification is again not being very precise, the conclusion is only partially correct. It doesn't work in all instances of giving donations. So you see we have critically evaluated, assessed, what did we assess? The arguments, claim or conclusion. On what basis did we assess? On the basis of the premises that have been provided. Whether those premises are relevant to the conclusion, whether those premises are accurate, whether those premises are giving us a complete support to the conclusion. We have done a basic, what you call as critical evaluation of these arguments.